What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to learn about the predicate macro in Swift 5.9 with Xcode 15. Before we jump into things, hit that like button down below, say hello in the comments, and let's jump right in. So I tried this in a playground and it wasn't cooperating. So instead of a playground, we are going to create a new project here. Um, no UI is going to be built today, but we do want this to work. Hence, we're going to do it in a project. Let me give this a name of predicate macros are cool. You can stick with uh, Swift, uh, of course, as a language. Storyboard or Swift UI is kind of irrelevant since we're not doing any UI. Toss the project wherever you'd like. And first things first, let's expand our Xcode window. Jump into our view controller. I'm going to stub out a function in here called go, where we will write out all of our code. We're going to, of course, call this function in view did load and just give your project a build and a run. So a simulator pops up and this is where we will basically execute our code and we're going to be printing stuff to the console. So let me also expand this guy. All right, so predicate macros. So obviously macros are a new feature in Swift and predicates uh, have been around for a while. We're gonna use them to filter things in a data collection. You might be familiar with NS predicate, which has been around for a very long time, but the predicate macro does definitely make doing predicate based filtration much nicer. So first we wanna create something that we're able to filter. So let me go and create a struct called student. Every student will have a name. Oh, that's not how you spell string. Every student will have a name, a age of type integer, and let's see, let's also give them maybe a favorite color. Now let's do, I don't know, let's do, let's call them a good student and it'll be a bool. You can clearly tell I'm doing this on the fly. All right, so we've got this student data type here and we're gonna create a array, which is going to be a collection of these. So we'll say a student and we'll create a couple of these. I'll use myself. Uh, I will not give away my age. So I'm gonna say I'm 30. Let's go with 40. Um, am I a good student? I think I'm a pretty good student. So I'll go true there and I'll just copy and paste this a few times. And um, let's just fill in some of these, we'll do some random numbers here. We'll say we have a seven year old as well. Some of these students are not good students, so we'll toss in some false values as well. All right, so let's get to the predicate goodness. So first and foremost, we're gonna define the actual predicate and basically the, um, the item for which we are going to filter, the criteria, if you will. So let's go and call this a good student predicate and what we're going to use is the hash sign and we're going to say it's a predicate over student and sometimes the autocomplete actually if you take a look at it it gives you this thing which is not what we want we're going to do a specific predicate over a student and with a trail enclosure we can uh, give the implementation of said predicate and what criteria to filter on the basis of so we're going to say student in and we're going to return if student uh, is good student. What is it called? Good student. Okay, the property is called good student. So we're basically just going to return all the students that are good. Alrighty, so we haven't actually filtered anything yet. We just defined this predicate here. You can imagine actually if you have a extension off of predicate, you can actually define a bunch of these in a global scope because all we're doing is basically defining the type of predicate. So it's saying that we can't use a scope here in this instance in the class, but my point is you can define a bunch of these and use them throughout your code base. So let's actually uh, do it uh, in the function. And the reason it was yelling when I moved it down there is because the student struct is in the scope of this go function. But let's actually call this predicate. So the way we would do this is in a do catch block, since we are going to try to filter based on the predicate and it can indeed throw a error. So we are going to say uh, try students uh, dot filter and you can see we can use this which gives us a closure or we can pass a predicate So we are gonna pass a predicate we defined it up here So boom just like that and we do want to uh, get the result of this. So we'll say uh, good Students and let's go and print these guys out. So we'll say for 
Uh, we'll do for I in good students. We're going to print I dot name. All right, let's give this a build in run in our simulator. Ignoring the simulator, we just care about the console here. And let's wait for our simulator to get its life together. There it goes. It has built. Xcode 15 is a little slow for me. I don't know if it's the same for others, but I digress. Cool, we get me, Mark, and Jill. We're all good students, apparently. Let's make sure that's true. Okay, that's totally true. So cool, that is a predicate macro in a nutshell. Now, obviously this is a very simple example, but you can imagine the power of this if you had a bunch of them, if you wanted to have some common filtration logic across your code base and you didn't wanna use a standard closure for whatever reason, you can get pretty wild with the type of compound filtration criteria that are used in predicates. You can definitely define these and use them all over the place. So if I wanted to define it as a static, let me toss student in the global scope of, uh, let me actually put it outside this class. And I could actually take this predicate and move it from out of the function. And I can toss it up here and let's make it static. And we should be able to do that. Shouldn't yell at me, hopefully. And now it can't find this predicate. So what I can do is say self dot since it is a static member, self with a capital S, and we can use it here. We can use it in other view controllers, et cetera, et cetera. There's actually quite a bit you can do with these, and I found myself using them much more than I thought that I would. So that is predicate as a macro in a nutshell. Before clicking away, make sure you hit that like button if you haven't done so already. I know I haven't made a video in like 40 plus days, so this is me coming back. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers, so, so close. So definitely subscribe, share the channel, tweet it out, send it on all the socials, connect on LinkedIn. I always love hearing from you guys and don't forget to leave a comment. I always love interacting with you guys as well. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.